guys, welcome back. Um, today we went to Walmart. We were doing back to school shopping. We needed like socks, underwear, all the necessities. And then also a little bit of shopping for Freya's birthday. Her birthday is at the end of August. So I kind of like to go and get an idea of what she likes. Um, I'll put some clips here. We're at Walmart and I always try to see when it's around her birthday kind of what things she's gravitating to because her development is so slow. And these are the two winners. She played with that one for about five minutes. And now this one. How do you make it go? And it's always kind of difficult to find toys for her because she has like an activity station kind of like this. Like it says it's for six month olds. We have one, but this one's new and fun. So I find myself just like buying all the same toys and just getting rid of the old ones <laughs> because you know, when you're stuck in the same developmental stage for years and years. Oh, move your hand. There we go kind of what you do but she's like super enthralled with this so this might be it so as I showed in the clips it's kind of difficult because she doesn't move up in stages like typical developing kids do so we're kind of stuck in the like six month old to year old toy section and it's hard I want to give her good birthday presents and things that she'll enjoy, but there's only so many six month old toys that you can do. So if you, if you have any suggestions, I'm open to suggestions. I would love that. Um, but we also had something happen at Walmart that happens quite often when we're out in public. And we've been pr pretty, lucky that our interactions with people in public I can count on like one hand the negative interactions we've had with people in public in person like strangers that we don't know but we do often have people come up and be like oh she's so gorgeous is she autistic um, and it's usually people that either have an autistic child themselves or a niece or a nephew that's autistic they're close to people that are autistic and see those um, signs in Freya, um, which is kind of, it's a hard subject to talk about because it's uh, kind of, is the answer, she's kind of autistic. <laughs> um, people with CDLS often get a secondary di diagnosis of autism. But I was reading this article that the CDLS website put out where there was a study where they studied uh, individuals with CDLS and looked at their autistic traits. And it's not quite autism. They have a lot of the same um, mannerisms like self-interest behavior, uh, delayed social interaction, delayed communication, repetitive motions, sensory seeking. All those things are autistic behaviors that are also CDLS behaviors. But also, Individuals with CDLS have great eye contact with, um, whereas people that have autism usually don't. And they also can gesture or point to kind of help communicate. And 
they also said that individuals with CDLS often have greater anxiety, whereas people with autism don't, which I didn't, I guess I always associated anxiety with autism, but I guess, I guess I was wrong in that, or so says the article. I will link it down below so you guys can read it if you're interested, it's really short. So Freya right now does not have an autism diagnosis because it's not necessary for her care. Usually um, when individuals with CDLS can either get more services in their state if they have an autism diagnosis or if they need specific like behavioral therapy, they'll get an autism diagnosis because it's automatically like given to those with autism and not to those with CDLS. So um, that's kind of the difference with autism and CDLS. And I found it really interesting to kind of see the differences. Um, and I always find it very interesting that it's people that know autistic people kind of within their family that always will just come up and be like, hey, is she autistic? Because um, this time it was like, my nephew's autistic and, and they have a lot of the same mannerisms. And Freya will make a lot of the same noises I've noticed that autistic people make. Just kind of that repetitive, like vowel sound, like, uh, you know. And I'm always almost flattered, like, the thing with autism is it's very widely known. Everybody knows someone with autism. Everybody knows what it looks like. And so for people to see my daughter and um, categorize her in something that they are familiar with is great to me because I want you to look at my child and be like, oh, this. Not scary, not sad, not I don't know what's going on, but maybe she belongs here which is great for me because I just look at it as more of an acceptance standpoint than anything else. Like it's not a judgment. It's not, these people aren't usually being mean. They're just curious like, hey, my nephew's autistic. Is your daughter autistic? So with CDLS, it's just kind of a CDLS thing that they do all those things. But if they are given the diagnosis of autism, it can open up a whole new realm of services and government help and therapies that can help their child. So a lot of times we'll get that diagnosis just strictly for the help and because it's more widely known and more widely accepted, you can get more things done to help your child. If you can give a diagnosis of autism where people people know what autism is as opposed to here's this rare Cornelia DeLange syndrome that has its own behavioral things with it that kind of look like autism. It's just so much easier to get the diagnosis of autism. So we'll see. As Freya grows, she might start needing more behavioral therapy or the wait list that we're on if you have a diagnosis of autism, you are further up on the list. So we might do that at some point. Um, but right now we're doing okay and we're getting what we need through her outpatient therapies and through preschool. So it's another you know round of doctors and diagnosis and um, our wait list, especially you have to have a psychologist also analyze your child and say that they have autism, which it just seems like a lot of hassle to me for something that we don't need right now, but it's good to know it's there in the future. So if you're interested, I'll link it down below. And always, if you need any information on CDLS, cdls.usa.org is the place to go if you're in the US. And I know there's foundations, there's a UK foundation and a Canadian? I remember hearing something like there was a Canadian one, but maybe now there isn't. I'm not sure, I'll have to look into that for you guys, but if you need any information, that's the best place to go. They always have the most up-to-date information and the best studies and everything. Did you just wake up from a nap? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
You excited? Yes. Yes. Mama's gotta go make dinner. Yeah, Mama's gotta go make dinner. Where are you off to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to eat? You want something to eat? You want to some pretzels? You want a pretzel? Go. Is that what you wanted, Suki? Leave it. Oh, gosh. Oh! You broke off a piece. Good job. Would you rather have a cookie? Is that what you wanted? Guess not, huh? You playing? Yeah. lettuce a lot of my lettuce is starting to bolt meaning it's gonna put off some seeds so gotta use some of this up before it goes bad my garden really really struggled this year all the sunflowers are gorgeous my onions are great, celery's good, artichoke is good, all my tomatoes and peppers kind of struggled. I've gotten a handful of peppers and a handful of tomatoes, but it just was so cold this year. I don't know if you guys saw um, when we were laying the grass in June, it was like a high of 60 degrees and 
the low never got below freezing, so I thought my plants would fare well, but they did not. Oh, last night I had a poppy, but it's, poppies don't last long. I was gonna show you guys. But all the, all the flowers are doing good. And I've got that. These peppers are green peppers. They're not quite ready yet, but they'll be good when they are. Oh no, maybe this is my poblano. This is my poblano plant, maybe? Maybe not, hold on. I don't know. That wind did a number on my hair. All right, well, we're about to go eat some dinner. You want some beans, Freya? Freya loved the beans last time we had them. You wanna go have some beans? Yeah? Let's go eat. Come here. Let's go eat. Well, thanks for being here for my little chat about autism and CDLS. If Freya eats some beans, I will put some video after. But if you don't see it, then just assume she didn't have any, huh? You ready to eat? Again, thanks for hanging out with us, and we hope we'll see you next time. Good job. That was a bean. Happened again today, just kind of while I was walking around the office. <laughs> nah, I think I'm done with that. Good trying, though. This is actually a pretty sweet line. Yeah. your spray. Your lime ricky. Mm -hmm. Sips? Mm -hmm. Just sips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, good dope. job. Good job doing just sips. <laughs> Yeah, you got it in your lucky hand. Mm -mm. Oh, chip instead. What if you put a crumb or a pencil mm. in the bean? Pencil? Mm. Are you eating a bean? Uh oh, you mm. dropped it. Well, you can eat the other one. <laughs> she stopped chewing and then she doesn't mm. feel it. Oh, there she's got it. You gonna Go eat it? It's in your lucky hand. Yeah. Yeah, not your right hand, your yeah. lucky hand. No. <laughs> no. Don't flick food out of your mouth.